10 o'clock. Hi guys, how are you? It's Friday, August 21st, and um, 41 years ago, I, or 42, 41 years ago, 41 years ago, my son was born. So I had to put it on the Facebook thing. So I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, they are taping right now in Texas. Uh, Ricky is. He's flying solo, just like how I flew solo here. And I just have such good, holding out good thoughts. We brought uh, two people from the old crew there to help Shelly with the new crew. And we we're doing total skeleton, no audience, no anything like that. So um, our first COVID show is going to air this Sunday with Sujata Shaw. She is a friend of mine. She's from India. And I so admire her work and her story is just amazing. And then we go on a field trip to Freddie Moran's house. And you haven't lived until you have gone to Freddie Moran's house. That's all I'm going to say. So if you were ever thinking about joining, now's the time. It's only $19.95 and you get six months. So that's just absolutely fabulous. Uh, I do want to speak about the whole COVID situation, which is why I am not in Texas. Um, I've mentioned that I'm my mom's, I am my mom's lifeline and I just cannot risk getting on a plane. Well, when we taped here, for the most part, we were masked up uh, with Sujata. She and I, she was my first guest and we didn't mask up because we'd just both been tested for COVID. So we felt completely safe. We have taken all necessary precautions. I know with Kevin's show right now, people are saying, was this shot during COVID and we're getting chewed out? No, it wasn't. And we've done everything right, as right as right can be while shooting these shows. So um, I'm pretty excited. You guys got me some questions. That makes me very, very happy. And oh, the other thing is up where we have a little place up in Groveland. It's been, um, it's been, mandatory evacuation. And I don't know that the little area, uh, Pine Mountain Lake is in peril particularly, but there's just one little crazy road that gets you up there. Well, two, but that area is a mess. You can't get through it. The only other way out is through Yosemite. And so this little community has, you know, a couple thousand people in it. And so they are getting them out. So it's called the, um, What's it called? The fire, the mock fire, M-O-C fire, if you're interested in following it at all. <clears throat> okay, so what do we have going on here before I get to questions and answers? This is B Bonnie and Chloe. This is their quilt. And uh, this is the Sequoia. Uh, they were doing this long distance. I think she said they're like about a thousand miles apart. And Mr. Frog in there just makes me really, really happy and they had a great time doing this so I had to step back to Sequoia a little bit now I want to say about this quilt this quilt I love my quilt I absolutely love how it turned out in retrospect I was crazy saying let's just buy fabric and do it together because this was not easy and I know a lot of you were out of your comfort zone and some of you still are out of your comfort zone with it. But when you challenge yourself like this, that's when you grow as a quilt maker. So I know I certainly grew and I don't need an extra 10 pounds because of a uh, <laughs> sip. But, um, well, I don't want to make fun about that. Okay, that could be bad luck. But anyways, um, if you found yourself struggling, great, good. That's how you're going to become a better quilt maker. So then this is Joy's, and Joy sent me this picture, I think Wednesday, and she just could not get into the K uh, facet fabric. So she picked this, I think it was, she said, uh, it's um, Mexican like Fiesta fabric or something. Totally fun. A lot of you are using your own stash, and I appreciate you sharing it with me and us. Okay, then this is Pines. Okay, I don't know what you're doing here, Pines, but something struck me, and I'm not being negative. What if you left in some whites like that? That's originally, I thought, I wonder if that's what she's doing. Um, or you're just going to do two. Those would be half square triangles in the center. It looks like that might be going on. I don't know quite what you're doing, but I, 
I am not finished seeing this quilt because I think you're really onto something super curious. Okay, this is Jill P. Okay, I'm going to talk about actually this right now. Um, I got a question from somebody and it was, um, I see you've put, it's from Trudy, I see you've put your quilt together with blocks touching. Is there a reason you're against using pickets? I've never heard the expression pickets and I'm assuming you mean sashing and I absolutely adore it. I think it will become part of my vocabulary now. When I do pickets or sashing, it is for a design reason. And right here, right here, this is a super strong design and the inner border or the sashing, the pickets are, are add to it, absolutely adds to it 100%. So unless it's a design thing, I usually kind of steer clear of the whole, uh, the whole sashing pickets thing. Okay, um, this person, this is uh, Trudy, and she did not want to work with Kafe, but she ran with Jane Sassaman's fabric. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. And it's so funny because I'm more visual than word oriented, and I was looking at it going, Whoa, whose fabric is that? And then thank you, Trudy, that you said it was Jane's. I just absolutely love it. Okay, let me go back to that. See, I don't think throwing sashing in there would be of any favor to that quilt. In fact, it would distract from it in my book. Okay, so here you're doing exactly what I do. I put it on the wall and then I try and sneak up fabrics before I cut into them. So like for instance, you've got those polka dots on the bottom left-hand side. You don't have to cut into it to decide to use it or not. Just fold it and put it up there. And then it looks like in the spool to the bottom right, I just noticed that of the polka dot, um, you have striped fabric or something, super cool. Okay, this one is, uh, D North, DAC North. I go, oh, that's cool. And then I started looking at it and I'm going, oh my gosh. Okay, the alternate blocks were pieced and I didn't see that right off the bat. And I don't mean pieced like mine. I mean like different blocks. So I think this is really cool. And the fact that you blended those fabrics and kept it subtle. I mean, there's a couple places where it's not subtle, but there's a couple places where it is subtle is really interesting to me. And then this is Kathy Gunstone. Kathy, I love it. Um, Kathy had originally put up a little bit of black sashing and she, I know her, so I would, was comfortable saying this, saying, yeah, I don't think I'd go there. Well, this I would run to in a second. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now see, there's a place where sashing is being used as a design decision. So Sue, Sue Mar, um, had to be evacuated and I'm not quite sure where you're from, but that tells me probably California. And when she came home, she said she, her brain, I mean, listen people, if you have to evacuate or you're worrying about these fires, your brain is gonna be in a big scramble. I love what you have going on here. I don't know where it's gonna take you, but when you feel this way, just start pinning things up on a wall and walking away from it, I would start by first getting some sort of grid going with those uh, blocks that you've made and then leave the room and then come back in. But I'm going to say give yourself a ton of grace on this because I know personally when I'm faced with any sort of trauma, I shut down. My creativity goes out the window. So give yourself grace if you're kind of, you go, well, I got home safe and blah, blah. I don't care. You're going through some real stuff. So give yourself, cut yourself some slack there. Okay, Susan asked a really good question. And it was, should she square these up? And I'm assuming that all of these have been sewn onto the six inch blocks, okay? No, I would not go square them up because what I think can happen is that um, you can end up cutting off fabric and then you start losing your points 
And it's going to be beautiful when those squares that are on point exactly butt up to each other. So I showed yes Wednesday, if you have one piece that's bigger than the other, put that on the bottom, pin the two intersections you want exactly right, right, put the big one on the bottom, and then let your feed dogs ease it in. I have eased in up to a quarter inch off. And it, yeah, it's a little funky. In fact, my signature block ended up like that. But when it gets quilted, it'll be just fine. So here's my quilt. Again, this was really, really hard for me and really, really fun for me. So I applaud you guys that uh, jumped into the swimming pool and you weren't even sure if you could swim or not because from what I'm seeing, what you're putting on the forum, you are swimming and you are doing the backstroke, you're doing the butterfly, you guys are doing it all. So here is, uh, let me go through some questions and some I might not be able to answer, okay? So this is from uh, Barbara and remember how I showed you how when you want something like this and you want to um, find where the center is and I said just pinch it right there, okay? Well, what she does, and again, I'd be really careful, is she pinches it, I gotta get this here, and then she takes a little, like, a two, just a little snip, just the littlest snip on the face of the earth where it is. And then that way, if the uh, fold goes away, you've got that. But I, but she says, and I agree with her, you don't snip more than two threads. All right. Um, somebody, let me see. Uh, I made. Okay. Here's the thing. My quilt, somebody just counted and said I have 30 blocks. So she's trying to catch up. Doesn't have to be this big or it can be bigger. I really don't care. It is your quilt. Um, typically, I don't get much bigger than that because we don't really put quilts on our beds. So how do you prepare the back of my quilt for hanging? Do I sew on loops or what do I do? Okay, this is from Alice from Maui. Ooh, a little jealous about that. Um, here is a quilt that I still have not sewn down the um, the sleeve, but I put sleeves in mine, okay? And I make it big enough that rods can go through. Some people like to bring it up a little bit so that the rod, when they sew it down, so that the rod doesn't uh, distort. But before I sew my binding on, Oh, no, I sew my binding on. Then I get my fabric. This was probably about eight inches. The two raw edges are up there underneath this binding on the back side. And then I just whip it around and then I just whip it down. And then at some point, I then just whip this down. Now, I have been taught, I just hate, I hate doing bindings and I hate doing sleeves. So I, I have been taught that when you do do this, you might want to consider sewing down the underneath side of the sleeve so that if uh, somebody's putting a pole in it or a rod in it, if it tears, it will tear your sleeve and not your quilt. Okay? I loved this fabric line of mine and it never went anywhere. Um, this is this quilt. We're doing ties and I will, on the quilt show at some point, show you how to work with ties. This was really fun. Super fun. <clears throat> Okay, on the on point blocks, I put this up for a reason. There's a couple questions that came in, but first let's talk about out here. These are half square triangles, which means that this part out here is on the straight of grain. The bias is sewn up right here, okay? Right there, the bias is sewn up. These out here are quarter square triangles so that this is on the straight of grain. I want the outside edge to be on the straight of grain. And then this is a half square triangle because I want this on straight of grain. All right. Ha ha. Let me show you something. Somebody else pointed this out to me. In your little book, the quick and easy block tool, there's a page back here 
that has a lot of really great information. It is 126, the last page. It tells you uh, what to cut things for your, let's say, oh, wrong one, it's right here. So let's say you have a six inch block. I got a, a six inch block for quarter squares, which are the side ones. You cut it nine and three quarters. Yeah, and then cut like that. Okay, that's what I did for these guys. Okay, and then for the half square triangles, you cut it at five and an eighth, like for the um, corners up there on the corners. So this is really fabulous. The other thing that I didn't even realize was here until I opened it up to look at this is that what are the diagonal measurements of the block? So we could figure out how big this thing is. Well, for a six inch block, it's eight and a half. Now remember, these are the finished sizes, not the raw sizes. So it's eight and a half. So you could do the math if it's one, two, three, four, five, five times, I hope my, let's see, five times 8.5. Okay, the body of the quilt is 42 and a half inches. There it is. You just get out your calculator, do your thing, and you can get that. Somebody else asked, and I'm just skipping, I'm trying to, um, first of all, when, everybody's texting me about the fire. Um, when you go and sew things on the diagonal, remember I told you if I had a do-over, I would have done it this way. I would have sewn across, because I could have, it would have been fine, but I, did it this way and somebody wrote and said I'm concerned that it's gonna stretch and get weird on me it's not it's simply not um, because it's no different if I'm sewing together a row like this or if I'm sewing together a row like this a row is a row the biggie is the um, are the biases and by the way in today's newsletter, which means it would be on the uh, on the quilt show, I did a whole thing on on grain. Uh, John came in and said, um, "I don't understand grain," and so I said, "Well, it's this and this," and he said, "Well, I said, and this and this is straight of grain. You just got to go watch if you don't know." And he goes, "But it can't be the same thing," and I said, "Yes, it can. Let me go get a book and prove it to you." I meant to get this out. So I went and got my book and proved it to him. <laughs> so, because I thought, God, maybe he's right. And the thing is, is when you write something like this, you have editors looking at it. Um, this, somebody else asked, could I do a book out of these COVID quilts? No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> This was my swan song, all right? <laughs> These books are just killer. This book, I love this book. This book is um, everything in quilting that you want to know, but there aren't any projects. So I even had to learn stuff for this book. Okay. Oh yeah, that was from that was from Dawn. <laughs> and she said about the book, she said, no, you need to do it. You've done so much already, but it's quite true that no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> no, I'm not doing another book. <laughs> um, okay. This is a really good question, and it is from Heather. You know when you're sewing seams together in the most possible way... Okay, Diane, I am sewing four triangles together, and that's how I ended up having to put this thing on point rather than straight across. I am not recommending what I did, okay? I would rather go straight across. Now back to this. All right, in a perfect world, when you sew two blocks together or two pieces together, the seams go in opposite directions so that they can nestle together, right? Well... Some and this happens, okay? Sometimes the seams are going in the same direction. And then what do you do? Well, Joe Morton, well, you might want to go search her show and watch it. 
does something with little clippies, clipping the seams. I thought that was wonderful. But what I do is I just say, okay, you guys are going in the same direction. I'm just gonna pin you with my super fine pins, a 16th of an inch on each side, and just sew it, okay? Yes, you get a lump there. Um, and then the other thing I might consider would be if it was super big lump to press my seams open, all right? But that's how I do it. And you go watch Joe Morton's show and she's gonna tell you another way to do it. And I was very impressed with that. But no, I hear exactly what you're saying, um, um, Heather, exactly. And she put in a quote from Vincent Van Gogh, which I love. For my part, I know nothing with any certainty, but the sight of the stars makes me dream. I like that. How do you get your binding to be the, ex oh, this is a good one. How do you get your binding to be the exact same size on the front as the back? So what she says is when she sews on her binding and then she rolls it over, it's a little bit bigger. Okay. I call Barbara Black. All right. She, well, let me start with mine. I cut at two and an eighth. My, and then I, of course, iron it, and then I sew it on and bind it. And typically, it does overlap a little bit, all right? Um, I used to do two because I happen to really, really, really like, um, I like thin bindings, okay? I used to do two, but then I found in holding it, I would get sharp pains up my arm. Now, we do have those little red clips now we can use, but... Um, I do one and an eighth. She like went, oh my gosh, I think she does like two and a half, but then she adjusts her her foot and all that. The other thing is, is it depends on what batting you're using. If you have thicker batting, that will determine it. But I just say for me, I do two and an eighth and then I fold it over and if it's a little bit bigger, I really don't care. And that was from Sherry. Um, do I have a list of all the blocks there are if you go to the front page of the quilt show um, There is go down. There's the playlist and everything is right there Okay, this one I'm worried about um, Gail is working with uh, the hand dies and it keeps running and running and running um, I would use more than the color catcher at this point I would get some Centhropal and and do that and with Santhra Paul, they have you throw it in and keep your lights and dark separated in really hot water, and which kind of freaks you out. And I would do that with the color catcher, and I think you might get some good results. And yours might be running way more than the person in the town next, right next door. Um, could you please review for this novice how to frame the blocks with one quarter square triangles? I went back to my day notes. If the finished is six point, the finished is not 6.5. This finished is six. 6.5 is the raw. So I would just go back here and for your quarter square triangles, you'll cut them at nine and three quarters. For your half square, you'll cut them at five and an eighth. You guys, if you don't have this book, um, we sell them at the quilt show, but doggone it, I use this all the time and I'll be using it for the next quilt we're doing too. It's a good little book. And when I discovered that, I just about had a cow. I was so happy. Um, I think that's pretty good. I think some of your questions kind of came in and were the same thing. Um, is this okay doing question and answer? I hope it is. Okay, are you sewing four triangles together for the cave block? Are you adding triangles to the piece block? I just answered that. Um, but John's watching. He's good. So let me tell you um, how this is going to roll out. What was the last question? The last question was about do am I doing quarter squares or, ha or half squares, I think. Am I doing four triangles sewn together like this? Or am I doing it like this? I should have done it like this. But no, I did it like this. That's your fearless leader. That's why it's a mystery, you guys. 
And um, I hope you've enjoyed working along with me and seeing that, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's work. You got to do this. Okay, what's this one? Oh, there's two things I want to talk about. What's going to happen next week? Okay, uh, next week I'm going to do a thing on um, how I basted it using my basting powder. Um, oh, somebody else asked this too, but I did answer you. She's having a hard time with this cutter. How you cut with it, sorry, I just realized because I answered you. Um, you press in here. Whoops, you press in, tap down, I'm open. Don't go like this because the blade is exposed on the bottom of it, okay? So just kind of run this like this. I think when people have problems with this is they cock their hand out up. And yes, they are going to have a problem. That's how we do it with a lot of our rotary cutters. Just relax a little bit and take it down. And then to close it, go like that. Okay? Um, how, let's see. I'm missing some comments here. Love the quilts and the variety. Thank you. For the, okay, I'm thinking down the road we might do these every couple weeks or something just for this so that we aren't waiting to the end. Um, but, okay, so this is what's going on. Next week, I'm going to do preparing the back, how I basted it. There's a lot of different ways to baste it. And... And I will also talk about how I'm going to quilt this. I've got a plan on that. Um, so that'll be next week. And then we're going to go to studio tours. A lot of you commented on my studio for what I put up on Facebook today or yesterday. And we go visit a bunch of different people's studios. Freddie Moran's is one of them too. And how they solved certain problems. So that'll be a little lecture that I'm going to do. Um, and then I probably am going to take a week off. <laughs> I think I am. If we still have a cabin to go to. Uh, and then we'll get going on the baskets quilt. So, and I am working on, I am working on the basket quilt like crazy. All right. Another thing, but on your calendar. Next Tuesday, um, RNK Distributing that owns Quilter Select is going to put on another tool school for us. And we are not shipping those things. They are, and they put together some good little bundles and stuff like that. And I believe uh, um, we have a shipping offer. I can't remember what it is, but today, hey John, what's the bit with shipping? I'll let you know later. I think we give some money off. Here he comes. John, what is the deal with shipping? We provide a, a coupon. What is a coupon for 10 bucks off or something? Like 10 bucks off shipping. Yeah, for shipping. But do you have to spend a certain amount to get that or something? Uh, like 25 or 30 Like 25 or 35 dollars. He something. thinks like 25 or 35. Don't hold us to it. We don't know anything. Um, but what's gonna happen is, is you, if I were you, you I pre-register. Oh, that's how you get, if you pre-register, that's how you get off some shipping money. Okay, yeah, so Kristen's going to put it up on the website today, and so go pre-register, and that will be next Tuesday morning, um, and all the information's there. I will not be presenting, but I will be there. I will be there making comments and all that good stuff, all right? So will the basket quilt be using Edita Sitar's Anna collection? Um, it's, oh gosh, I forget what it's called. I don't think it's Anna, but I will tell you right now, any of her collections would be smashing with this. I'm using the pink one, okay? Um, you deserve a day off, but you'll be missed. Okay, are there any kits available for the, not this quilt, we're done, but for um, Edita's, yes. And that's another reason I'll probably be taking a week off is because we're, I think we're gonna be getting the fabric any day and we've gotta cut them and wanna be able to get it to you and all that. And again, we will be using this book. I wish I had written it. Yeah, if I could write this book, I'd do that. Okay, what else? You know, I didn't have some leftover fa cake fabric. Okay, and then John just said too, we do have some leftover bundles from this. All right, and that's going to be going up for sale. Some may not have all of it. So we had a ton of extra solids, um, not the hand dyes, the others. 
So, so open your newsletter, always open your newsletter. And again, this weekend, I'm very excited about uh, this show because Sujata and Freddie are personal friends of mine. So, and we celebrated Freddie's 90th birthday. How about that? And to my, my, my buddies in Texas, you guys break a leg. I know that um, Ricky and Kat are doing an is a Lizzie and Izzy a Lizzie show this morning, and then Barbara Black is in for uh, Wendy Williams because she can't fly to the U.S. right now, and she's going to be showing us the next year block of the month. But you might not see that till January. No, I don't know. So, anyways, you guys have a great day. And if you want to make your quilt bigger, make it bigger. It's up to you. Wait, John has one more thing. Editor's fabric is sweet sixteen. Oh, Editor's fabric is that we'll be working with is sweet sixteen. Thank you. I bet Kristen just texted you that. No, somebody did. Somebody did here. It's sweet sixteen. So, oh, why did TQS move to Texas? Um, we had to. They uh, shut down our studio. It was horrifying that we had to leave Colorado. That was our family, guys. Our family. But um, it was we. Uh, Justin looked high and low for a place that could support a uh, audience, which of course there's no audience there right now. And um, but I have been told that these people are absolutely fabulous, wonderful just like our Colorado folk. And actually we have flown in two of our Colorado folk to help out this round. So, and they were at my house, the Colorado folk, when we were taping shows. So I guess one's family, always family, even if you have to go away to college somewhere, right? One more? One lady wants to put a panel in this quilt. Oh, put a no panel center, in the center or center. whatever you want. Uh, off center, center, I don't know. That's why I would have a design wall. Um, some of you are asking me questions and I'm just shooting in the dark, okay? Because that's one thing that's bad about this format. So, any, oh, we're in Texas. We are in uh, the Dallas area. Irving. Irving? It's in Irving, Texas? Yeah. And so I'm really sad I'm not there. I, I saw pictures of the set. I'm not allowed to show them yet. Lilo's in charge of that. Uh, it's, it's very um, Texan. So maybe I'll have to get myself some cowboy boots or something. So, okay, guys, we've got to go now. Let's get busy. Let's go sew, okay? Stay safe and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.